Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and in this video I'm going to show you how to run different modded versions of Seven Days to Die from a single installation of the game. We'll be using shortcuts that have been modified very simply, and this is how you do it. So before we get started with this tutorial, it's useful to understand exactly what's going on with mods these days. Things changed fairly recently so that all of your mods need to go into your app data folder and not into the actual game folder. Now, the problem with this is that your app data folder, or your mods folder within that at least, can get pretty cluttered with all sorts of different mods. Now, what if you wanted to play one version of the game using one set of mods and then later change to another version of the game using a different set of mods? At the moment, you'd have to drag the mods that you don't want out of your app data folder, put them to one side, then drag them back in and remove the other mods, and it gets a bit messy. So the idea of this method here is that we can break them down into having their own folders, which will only be called upon when we tell the game that's the version we want to use. So for example, I might want to have a vanilla game. I can use one shortcut to start a vanilla game. Then I can use a separate shortcut to start up another game, which is modded with, for example, uh, the Not Medieval mod. And then I could have another shortcut that starts up the Wild West version of the game. And we can do all of this without having to shuffle our app data mods folder around. So in app data and roaming, there is our seven days to die folder. And this is where mods normally go. So if I open that up, we can see this is the place where they'd be stored and your saves and your worlds and things would also be stored here. Now there's nothing there at the moment because this is a fresh installation. But if I just do a right click and say new folder, I can add a mods folder just here. And inside of that is where I would place any mods that I downloaded. To get the system to work, we're going to need to have separate versions of this folder. Now, all we need to do is duplicate that and rename it, and then use these shortcuts to direct the software to using that specific app data folder. So let me right drag this folder to an area at the side, not on top of one of these, because it will make a mess. Just right drag to there, let go. It'll ask what I want to do. I want to copy it. I'll scroll back up. There's the copy that I've just made. I can do this as many times as I want for several different mods. So now I have a copy here. Let me just click on that again and rename it. Or you can right click and choose rename. And in this case, I'd like to call it Wild West. Hit enter. And there we go. Inside of that, it's exactly the same as the vanilla version at the moment because it is a fresh installation. But if I open up mods, this is where I would drag all of my, in this case, Wild West mods. Let's go back a stage and have a look. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be identifying where this is. And you would just simply repeat this technique that I'm about to show you for any other mods that you need to keep separate from each other. So I need to stress that this only works with mods that run from the app data roaming folder. It won't work with mods that still use the old system where you had a mods folder within the seven days to die game files. Okay, let's get started. Let's start by creating a shortcut to a vanilla version of the game. I've just opened up a file explorer going into the C drive. Program files 86, down to Steam, down to Steam apps, into common, seven days to die. And here is a fresh installation just made today. New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. And there is the file that we need to use. I'm going to right drag that onto the desktop and say create shortcut. And I'm just going to quickly rename that to Seven Days to Die Vanilla. There you go. Next thing we're going to do is right drag that on the desktop and say copy here. And I'm going to change the name of that one to Seven Days to Die. And I'll call it Wild West because that's the mod that I want to run a separate shortcut to. So what we need to do is uh, if we just have a look inside of this shortcut here, let's start with this one. So that's the vanilla one. If I right click on that and say properties, it's telling me there what the path is to that exe file. And uh, without going into too much detail, you can see there it is there, program files, and eventually it gets to the exe file. Now, what we're actually going to do is change this one so that our user data folder is defined as being somewhere else. Now, this isn't a secret. It's just not a commonly known thing. If I right click on here and say properties. After the speech mark, I'm going to put a space, then a minus sign, then user data folder. That's a capital U, user 
capital D, data, capital F, folder, equals. So next we need to find where exactly our mods are installed. So if I go back into the file explorer, and then I'm going to use percent app data percent to find the app data folder. And there is our vanilla seven days to die app data folder. So what I need to do now is copy the location of this new folder here. So if I open it up and I go up to the address bar at the top here, I can do a right click and say copy address as text. Once I've done that, I can go back to the shortcut that we're editing. And at the end, after use the data folder equals, I just do control V. It pastes in that new address. I'll just apply that and say, okay, and close all of that down. And now we have two shortcuts, one to run the vanilla version and one to run the Wild West version. So let's just quickly test it out. If I double click vanilla, there we go. And there we can see the vanilla version. And if I go to continue game, you can see everything is empty because it's a fresh installation. So I'll just back out of that. And now let's try the Wild West shortcut. Double click on that. And I can see straight away that's worked because the background has changed. And if I go to continue game, there are the worlds or the saves that I've got for that mod. Well, I hope that's useful. If it was, I'd really appreciate a like. As always, if you're not subscribed, then that would be really nice too. I've got lots more videos on this sort of thing on my channel. Please have a look and uh, stick around for some news on Terragon coming shortly. Bye-bye.